the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. Hey everybody, God bless you. I want to go ahead and give you a quick uh, uh, synopsis of what we talked about today. And I, and I, I changed the topic because I've started off with the kind of topic called to be two types of churches, the those that obey Christ and those that disobey Christ. And I changed it more to line up with the scriptures so that people, if they're going to discuss it and debate it, they can at least line up with what scripture I'm coming from. And I'm coming from Romans chapter 8. I'm talking about verse 6. We're talking about being being caught in the mind of spiritual light. So this is what I want to do, and and because what I've seen so much, and I think most of them agree now, we have become so comfortable. You know, I can't say we have, because I see based on history that we have done card we've been acting on the cardinal flesh and cardinal reality for a very long time. But it's called two types of Christians, spiritual minded and cardinal minded. That verse that goes to that is Romans 8, 6. So when you talk to your pastor and you talk to your minister and you talk to your fellow believers, you ask you, you, what I want you to do is assess whether you are cardinal. Are you cardinal Christians? And then what I do encourage you to do, what we talked about today was Google, go do word search, go to the library, have you want to say, look up the atrocities first of religion, religious people or religion and how much religion has uh, driven people to do mass killing and murders and torture and some very inhumane things. And then if you want to talk about the, the, the our Christianity itself, then you go and look up look up the atrocities of Christians and you'll see that we, we got to, and you know it, starting from the crusade all the way to the transatlantic slave trade, all the way to the slavery all the way through the Jim Crow laws and all those things and all the way to this day we see where people have dehumanized people to justify the behavior. Now we're seeing it even between political parties where somebody is sitting there just because you're part of this party uh, we're going to hurt you, we're going to kill you, we're going to dehumanize you. Both sides to a degree but one side in particular is really putting down uh, a lot of rhetoric of talking about physically hurting somebody. Uh, even in Christianity, we talked about the fact that the evangelicals and so forth talking about abortion with the with the the inciting people to go blow up abortion clinics and and then put uh, pregnant women or women who commit abo ador uh, uh, abortion put them in jail. You know, it, it's just a lot of things that people would do in the name of their faith, their religion, and in our case, Christianity. So we need to fit there and say, do we need to operate and try to deal with things from the cardinal level or from the spiritual level? You know, God is the spirit in John 4, 24. God is the spirit, and those who worship him must worship his spirit in truth. And we've been called to preach the good news, not be militant. And we talked about the fact is that even uh, Christianity did not start off, nor is it nor are the teachings of Christ about violence. But when Rome took over and the church was accepted as the same religion, it became a banner also to be more militant. And that's where the crusade came in. And the viciousness and the, the, the terrible thing that was done in the crusade, look it up and read it for yourself. We, as believers, we, it's time for us to let our light shine and show people who are the real Christians. Meaning, and I'm talking about spiritual Christians. We have spiritual-minded Christians, not cardinal-minded. So real quick, I want to go ahead and read the, uh, the scripture I'm coming from, and then we'll, we'll go ahead and get into the study. So right here, like I said, two types of Christians, spiritual-minded and cardinal-minded, coming from Romans 8, 6. But let's go ahead into those scriptures. I want to read it real quick. Uh, it's like this. Romans 1, 8, I mean, Romans 8, 1, all the way to 8, 6, is what I like to read as, as the foundation where I'm coming from. He said, there therefore no condemnation in them which are in Christ Jesus, walk after the flesh, but after the spirit. 
For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, and it was weak to the flesh, God sent his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemn sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that after the spirit the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind, listen y'all, is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So the date on the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if so be that the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. But if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken, make alive your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells in you. Now, what I'm trying to say, if you look at what we just read, and you go back and read it for yourself, all the things from the lynching, all the things from the slave trade, all the things from the crusade, all the things leading them to the day. If you call yourself a Christian, if you use any cardinal weapons, any fleshly tools to try to make somebody be a Christian, to try to make somebody line up to be righteous, to make somebody to be what you think they're supposed to be as far as being holy, you can't do it because cardinal tools does not make you holy. Is only the spirit, the righteousness of Christ that's given to you as a gift. And if it's given to you as a gift, and the only thing for other people to do is receive the gift or continue to be what they are. But you are not cardinal. Remember that, amen? I hope you enjoyed the study. And listen to these introductions more than anything else because that's what we're trying to come to. Let's stop being cardinal Christians and let's stop being spiritual Christians. Amen? God bless you. God loves you. I will go ahead and make the, uh, the session available next, buy them up in uh, A, B, and C, and D. And also, I'll go ahead and make sure that you uh, get these out as soon as possible for you can digest them one day at a time or every other day. And also, remember this, subscribe. And, and make comments, too. I'll receive them. I, I mean, at least I'll, I'll read them. <laughs> God bless you. Take care. Bye-bye. There was no one that was born at this particular time that was not born in sin. Come on. And at this point, just look at it from the blind man's point of view. Is they're looking is like because you were born in sin, there's no righteousness for you. And that God doesn't deal with you. But God dealt with this man who was born in sin and miraculously dealt with him. Yes. So that kind of just puts them on the back burner. Yeah. You know, now the focus is not on them. It's not on, you know, they have no control uh -huh. of the people. Because if God does this for sinners, Come on now. then, you know, where do we stand? Because we've never done this for us. Mm -hmm. Hey, look, here's the other point, too. I want to catch this is my piece on that, too. And check this out. You, you're catching where I'm coming from. You, like you just said, all of us born in sin. And yet they obviously put themselves separate from that because mm -hmm. they said, You, born all together, born in sin, teaches us. Mm -hmm. So, so who are you? I, I'm trying to say, are you you just said earlier that you to say you're not born in sin? And you're trying to teach us? <laughs> so I can't be like you. I can't be <laughs> you see, the hypocrisy. That's what we're talking about. That's the hypocrisy. There's some people who come into the body of Christ and act like they never sin. And and therefore now they can look at somebody else and, and call them less than, you know. You're a sinner. I'm not going to listen to you. Oh, you, but you're not a sinner. 
Now, and look, the bad thing about it is, because you know, scripture says all the sin comes short of the glory of God, so we already got that. The question is, how many people, after they have come into Christ, have sinned? And 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 I, I can put my hands up because the fact is that all are still working different levels. Like you're saying, as much as given much required, as far as your maturity, you shouldn't be falling for the same things as you used to fall for. But you are still falling for things that you have not yet overcome, that you have not dealt with. And and that that's that's critical. But what's that old thing about the fact is that you go to the hospital and you don't go to the hospital and you see people in the bed and you sit there and say, what is this? What is this sick person in here for? Yeah. How, what, what do you think they went to the hospital for? They went to the hospital to get healed. And guess what? Did you correct me wrong that my this is a good parable? Not only do they go to the hospital to be healed, most cases when they leave the hospital, they're still in a healing mode. They've just been stabilized enough. And so whatever they had to cut out, they had to cut it out. Whatever chemicals or medicine they put in to try to kill something. But they, 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 they're not fully recovered when they leave the hospital. That's why they put, they, look, that's why they, ooh, it does, you see the parable on this, right? That's why they even take them out of a wheelchair. They take a wheelchair and take you to the car. Uh, why? Because you still, you still going through it. And the same thing about us. <laughs> we, there's people, we go in the hospital, we go into the church facilities, we go into congregations, we go into the healing process, and we are spiritually wheelchaired out <laughs> to, cause because we still got some things, our body still got to recover. Recover. Come you on, know, bro. That, that, you know, that's good that, <laughs> But also can you understand that it don't matter what they do in the hospital mm. to fully recover requires God's intervention. Mm. Mm. It yes, is sir. God's plan mm -hmm. that has been set in place for your body to go from where it was when it was damaged to fully recover. Exactly. So exactly. it is, they, they're not mending these cells together. Mm -mm. They're they're sewing together, and God is completing that surgery. Come on! Don't man. ever don't ever take God out of the equation and think that these physicians are actually doing what needs to be done. And uh, many times, the proof in that is that people put their faith in these particular uh, doctors, physicians. Yeah. And. When the physician says, this is all I can do, mm -hmm. that's where their faith ends. Yeah. Because that yeah. physician can't do no more. But if their faith is in God and they Come believe, on. then that's where the miraculous come. That's where the true healing, come on, man. recovery comes from. Exactly. So uh, not saying that it doesn't happen to non-believers. But understand that even them, you know, get the rain. Exactly. Rain rains on the just and, and the unjust. unjust. Yes, it does. So yes, that sir. process follows. I mean, even faith. Faith applies to those who are not. Mm -hmm. of you put your faith in a thing. Yeah. You believe a thing, it will come to pass. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, 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 the process is there. It's there for good. And it's there for bad. Every time there is a good, you got to believe and understand that there is an opposite to that. There is a a uh, uh, I forgot what the word is. You know, there's always the opposite, like the yin and the yang. Yeah. The yeah. up and down side, left and right. Uh, there, there's there's always an opposite. There's a falseness to everything that is righteous. To everything. Yeah good there is an opposite of it and pretty much the same principles apply for one or the other 
Yeah, another thing too that the the I found with the, the analogy of the hospital is you can come back. You could be you could something else could cause you to go back into yeah. the hospital. Sometimes, like in, in remissions, you can you can come out of remission and go back. You right. know, and, and that that's just part of life. If uh, all of us have the we've been to, all of us have been sick before in physically, you know, and recover from the flu, uh, from other types of ailments, high blood pressure, low blood pressure, sugar, and all other things. These things you either try to treat, and, and that's the bad thing about sometimes the day, modern day hospital, they're not trying to get you to be, they're not trying to recover you, they just trying to treat the effects of of a disease they're sustaining you to live with a thing with a thing to live without a thing and so that is a lot of uh, uh western medication yeah. western medicine is not to cure you is to prolong you and understand that no matter how many times we tell you it's still the truth it is the love of money Mm. Ooh, to all that is evil and that is evil I just thought about that when you think about it is that they have ministries moved to that same pattern of living with something now and, and in some part we have to live with Peter said remember when Paul said in yep. my flesh dwellers no good thing uh but I, I guess he also had a thorn in his side. Not saying, you know, uh, we we don't know. We know a thorn is a physical thing, but I don't believe that he was talking about a physical thorn. That he yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, that's yeah, just else. that yeah, makes no else. sense. Exactly. So, um, but obviously, uh, there's things that that you you deal with. You know, you yes, live sir. with, but but in it. Is where the glory of God begins. Exactly. Matter of fact, I was thinking about back to that the analogy of the fact that the modern day physicians try to get you to live with it, right? Yeah. They, you know, they're not trying to cure it, they're trying to live with it. Yeah. And maybe ministries are trying to get you to live with something. With the facade, here's the thing I'm talking about. With, with, you remember the, the the laws that the Jewish people had. Do you remember some of them? And they, they, they weren't, and they remember the, the sacrifices were not getting rid of the consciousness of sin, right? It was just covering. Covering, yeah, just covering. Right? And and, and see, in reality, Christ, the, 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 the true purpose of ministry, of the gospel, and the, the, uh, the challenges, without thinking people, what I was saying is getting into this was that have ministries used doctrines of men, laws, behavior, guidance to be there? Because one of the things I was talking about was going to church and the, 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 as ministry moved from moved to the same parallel of hospitals, were they really not in the go the, the 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 objective of curing you, but in in getting you to live with something, opposed to finding a way to cure you. So when we talk about laws, when we talk about uh, the, the doctrine of a ministry saying in our ministry you do this, this, and this. You wear these type of clothes. You will follow the Ten Commandments. Um, you will behave this type of way. And 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 then if you don't, we're gonna judge you, we're gonna ostracize you, we're gonna put you down. That that it's not treating the it's not treating a person for to be cured is only trying to teach a person how to cover 
what's going on the inside. Opposed to the fact is that maybe the real focus should be is let's let the word of God clean you, cleanse you out, clean you out. And let's not only for you, but for myself as well. That is not to get the head knowledge of what I'm supposed to do because it wants us to know right and wrong regardless. That's my that's my buddy. My buddy always talked about the fact is you know what you're supposed to do. You know what's right. One of the things is for us is that finding restraints is not the cure. Changing the heart is the cure. Huh? You see what I'm saying? This allowing the word of God itself to be the the, the, the manifestation of changing. You know, it goes with the, the Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. It said the, the main part of that was saying is be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, of doing the things of the Word of God in your heart. Now, I ain't a part about your heart because I don't want you to, I just want you to understand, we don't want you to just have a head knowledge. We want to have spiritual knowledge, understanding knowledge, understanding who you are, understanding that you are going through a spiritual warfare because that's what we go through. The, the, the man, it, you know, when man sit there, when I look at the atrocities, like I said, in the crusade, the crusade was, was, was one of the brutal things that happened in the church history. But we know that, and the bad thing about it, it didn't stop there, did it? When we got to talk about the, we talk about the fact is that, let's see here, let's, let's go back to this game real quick. I, I thought it was interesting. Because love, a lot of the brutality of the history of the church. And, and I was looking at the this one before. Let me see if I can bring it up. When I tap on one the other way, here we go. The crusade, if you look at that, look at that, the crusade. The milit that's something when the Christian Christianity became more militant, right? The crusade period of AD after the death. Christ, 1095 to 1291. 300 years later, or 200 years later, you, you got into the transatlantic slave trade. You also got the, before that, you got this, you got also, you got the Spanish Inquisition. And, and the only thing I want to talk about those is the fact is that the behavior of the Christians toward people that they demonize and the hypocrisy that goes with it to call a person property savage to to and and did but to, but at the same time you being savage toward them does that make sense where I'm coming from you somewhere in the, in the uh the the change is the, the veering off of Christ. Remember, Christ said, Follow me, right? Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and life. No one comes to follow but by me. So, the, the whole point is that if you went toward Christ, and, and his teaching is none of violence, his teaching is to love the enemy, bless those who persecute you. You took, even as the even trying to use the, 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 the lie of, of De, by dehumanizing people. Just like the, and, and the, you, it's the same playbook, because even when the Sadducees and Pharisees, they call Christ a sinner. They, therefore, they don't feel they can, they have to listen to him. That's the same playbook that people did for the crusade, they, they, they do, to justify the atrocities that they did to the people. And, and we took it. What I'm trying to tell you something is the church history veered off from the teaching of Christ to a, <laughs> the teaching of the devil, basically, because the atrocities is done. As a matter of fact, do you ever notice that?
and then the demonizing, bigotry, racism, all those things. Did you ever notice that it was okay to do bad things to those people? And let's make sure you get it. You, once you demonize people, you said it was okay to do bad things. The bad thing I'm talking about is the where the commandment, you remember the Ten Commandments? I think most of you do. The Ten Commandments says, thou should not kill. You came up, man, came up with a lie, came up with a deception, based on fall, I'm concerned the devil, to say it's okay to kill them. It's okay to enslave them. It's okay to, to discriminate against them. It's okay to redline district them. It's okay to, to talk bad about them. It's okay to teach your children to talk bad about them. It's okay for your children to get to the point where some of them will actually do mass murder. Because see, you still, you can do that to them. Because we have dehumanized them. And when you dehumanize somebody, somewhere, somewhere along the line, I'm trying to, I'm really me, I'm trying to understand myself. Where did it become justifiable to depart from the teaching of Christ? You know, the part about loving one another? The teaching about preaching the good news? Somewhere, it ain't happened very early stages of the church, especially when it when it's rolled to indoctrinated it. It took on the persona of, of, of uh, violence. But what type of church are you? I want to sit there and invite you to listen to this study carefully. And I also want to invite you to look up the history of religion. And I'm talking about look at the atrocities of religion. Look at the atrocity of the Christian church. Look them up because there's a lot. And why I'm saying that, the Bible says that a tree is known by its fruit. What fruit are you bearing? That's what we want to discuss. And, and keep in mind, you can always change, revert back, repent, and follow the will of God. So even if you have a history of bad things, you can always come back to the throne of grace. Because that's what the gospel is all about. So I want you to take time to listen to the study, analyze it for yourself, and ask what type of church are you. We got to the point where we had to use, went to the book of Revelation to the church of Laodicea, and what that church was like. And the question is, are you like that church? But if you believe and you want to believe, follow his will. He gave you the Lord, he gave you the Lord's commandment so you can follow his will daily. Amen. All right. God bless you. I see you. Don't forget to subscribe. And and I will break these down into segments A, B, C, D, and whatever it takes to finish it up. But I just want you to analyze. And like I said, I just want to put out there to you. If you decide that you don't want to believe Christ, if you decide that you don't believe in eternal life, that's a choice you make. And we respect your choice because you make that choice. All we all tell you is that everyone will give, every, look, my scripture said by faith. That's all I can go by faith in his word. Is that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. So, you can say now or you say when you leave this world. That's up to you. God bless you, but I chose to do it now. Make that decision now. I encourage everybody else to make that decision now as well. God bless you. I hope you enjoyed the segment, the study that we did this Sunday on the 9th of July. And say, look, yes, sure, Jesus is Lord. Amen? Amen. God bless you. And I'll see you when I see you. Bye-bye. <laughs> this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you.